Hello there, my name is Tracy Elsom. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator based in Canada. For today's Watch on Wednesday project, I want to show you a very quick and easy thank you card made using this Swan Lake stamp set, which is in the 2017-2018 annual catalogue. It was actually first released at the beginning of the year in the 2017 occasions catalogue and I'm very pleased to say that it is carrying over into the new one. Um, also during this video I will show you some ideas that I have for using things from a room in my house and I'm going to do this from time to time and it'll be part of a Room Raiders series and today the room I'm going to be raiding is my bathroom. So first of all we'll start with the Swan Lake and we'll make that card. Okay, so I have the image that I want. It's this pretty little bulrushes image and I like to keep the imaging sheet on the stamp. So I'm just going to use my acrylic block to pick it up. Now, as you can see, the block's a little bit grubby and the stamp doesn't really stick very well. So my first tip for raiding your bathroom is to use a simple uh, hand wash. It's just one of these cheap antibacterial ones that you get from the dollar store. I'll put a little tiny drop on my ink pad, on the block rather, give it a good rub. And then I've still got some on my hand, so I'm going to rub it on top of that stamp. Get a piece of kitchen paper and then just wipe it off, dry it off completely. Now you'll see, when I press down on my block, the stamp is much more firmly attached, which is a good thing when you're stamping. Okay, so I'm just going to use basic grey archival ink, and I'm going to stamp my image just there. This is a very one of the new, very vanilla, thick note cards with an envelope very easy to use you get the card already cut and scored you just have to fold it so and for this i'm going to use some stamping right markers i like stamping right markers for a couple of reasons you get very vibrant coloring which is nice um, i do a lot of water coloring but i also like to vary it a little bit now some people think that because it's a standard water-based marker that you can't actually get a lot of shading with it or differentiation in the colour which you would get with an alcohol marker and we used to get with the old blendabilities which unfortunately Stampin' Up! discontinued a little while ago. So I've started with the leaves here with the new Lemon Lime Twist. It's a new colour from the 2017-2019 in colours. And then the Lily there I've done with Powder Pink, another one of the new 2017-2019 in colours. For the water, I'm just going to very quickly just colour in like that. And that's using Pool Party marker from the Subtles pack. And then I'm going to finish up here doing the bulrushes with crumb cake. Nice and simple. Okay. And to stamp my thank you, I can get it straight. There we go. So, all very pretty, if a little flat. What I'm going to do now is now that that uh, Stamperite markers have had a little chance to dry, I'm going to go back in. Now, bearing in mind I'm using exactly the same markers, and I'm going to go over some of my previous colouring. And hopefully you can see there on the green where I've had one layer of colouring and then the second layer of colouring over the top. And it's a really simple way to add some shading or some dimension to your 
images, even though these are not alcohol based markers, you can add the extra shading and the extra dimension just by going over it a second time. So there we go. So there's my image there. I'm going to add a little bit more to the water and this time I'm just going to follow those lines that the stamp designer has very kindly left for me. So that's the card. I'm going to stamp the same image on the front of the note card envelope and very quickly just colour that as well. My plan is to do a number of these this month for my June customers. So anybody who places an order with me in June will receive a hand stamped, hand coloured card from me to say thank you for shopping with me and for supporting my business. So we'll just finish colouring that. Go back in with the same colours in the same way I did on the front of the card. A little bit of lemon lime twist in the middle of that water lily. Off with the water. Give that a minute or two to dry and then just go over those lines. So there it is. Thank you card with a matching envelope. This is going to be the first of an occasional series that I'm going to do for you on things that I've collected from around my house to help me in my craft room. And I'm going to call this series Room Raiders. And today the room that I'm going to raid is my bathroom. There's lots of different things that I've discovered that I would normally have in my bathroom that really work well for me in my craft room. The first thing is this container. It's an acrylic holder and I purchased it at the dollar store for about three dollars. Um, it's designed to hold a variety of bathroom things, toiletries and makeup and things like that. And I actually use it to hold my some of my acrylic blocks, and my adhesives, and my bone folder, pick up stick, various bits and pieces. It comes in very useful and it actually looks quite nice on my shelf. So it keeps everything controlled and out of the way. Um, one of the blocks was not in my holder there because I want to show you um, again the way that I help to keep my um, clear mounted stamps on my blocks. Now I like to keep the imaging sheet on the stamp. A lot of people don't put them on because they find that they have problems then getting the stamps to stick to their blocks. And the reason this is is sometimes the blocks are greasy um, or they're dusty. I've discovered that um, this often has a problem when uh, the humidity is too high or the humidity is too low um, or it's too cold or it's too warm. Um, so rather than mess about, I have my own method of making sure that it sticks. Now, as you saw there, put that on and it doesn't take much to, to knock it off, which is a real pain when you're trying to stamp. So I have um, hand sanitizer. This one happens to be a smelly one that I was gifted. Um, I tend not to use uh, scented hand sanitizers on my hands, so um, they're ideal for when I'm working in the craft room. But any hand sanitizer will work. It doesn't have to be scented. It doesn't have to be coloured. This one even has little specks in it. And either way, it doesn't really matter. 
um, all I do is put a little spot of the hand sanitizer on the block, give it a quick clean, rub it in, then rub it onto the stamp as well, just on the back there. It's important not to get alcohol on the surface of your rubber stamp because it can actually dry it out and cause problems with the stamp making it crack. So just keep it on the back. So having wiped the hand sanitizer over the block, I'm just using a piece of kitchen towel to wipe it completely off the stamp and off the block. Press that down and now you can see that stamp doesn't come off half as easy as it did before. So that stamp's ready to use. <clears throat> Another um, cleaning product that I use, hand soap. This one happens to be antibacterial, doesn't have to be. The reason I use the hand soap is when I'm using my photopolymer stamps, uh, which are the clear, the, the see-through ones. I'll pull out one of those. So they come like this and they can get a bit grubby on the back, they don't stick so well. All I do is take a little bit of hand soap in my hand, I put the stamp in my hand and I wash it underneath running water, rinse it really well and then place it stamp side down onto uh, the side of the sink or onto a little uh, tray or something and let the back of the stamp air dry and once you've done that you'll find that the stamp is very very clingy again and will stick to your blocks without any problem. Another reason for you for having this bottle is when the bottle is empty I will save this it's got a pump dispenser this one um, actually produces a foam rather than just a standard pump dispenser and um, you can either oh, this one happens to be soap I've got one here that was face wash. Um, again, it creates a foam when you pump it out. And what I do is I, when they're empty, I take the bottle. And this one happens to be filled with uh, Island Indigo ink, some water and a little bit of um, rubbing alcohol. And I use that to create a background. In fact, it was the background that I created here, these bubbles on this fish uh, card there looks really nice and I'll show you, put a link to the, the card where I made that. There is a video showing you how I made that card, but that's just using an empty foaming soap bottle. <clears throat> this is the alcohol, it's 50% alcohol, it's just purchased in dollar store again, very cheap and cheerful. Um, and I use that with my stamp and spritzers. This is Melamambo ink, just about 10, 15 drops of reinker inside the stamp and spritzer with some alcohol. And then I can spray that and use that to create some nice effects. Ready my husband's side of the bathroom to grab some shaving foam. Shaving foam you can create some really nice marble effect backgrounds. I'm not going to do that today but I will show you that in another video but um, I wouldn't necessarily use the most expensive shaving foam that you can buy but <clears throat> you can buy some very cheap stuff again in the dollar store just buy a cheap and cheerful shaving foam and you can create backgrounds with that. Raging the bathroom drawer. These are emery boards. I happen to keep them in a toothbrush holder. Just makes it easy so I always know where they are. But this emery board is a great thing to have to hand. Sometimes when you're cutting, especially if you're using Whisper White which is quite thin and your blade on your stamping trimmer is a little blunt, um, you can sometimes get these little wispy bits on the edge and the edge can be a little bit rough. All you need to do is take an emery board and you can either do it that way or smooth and you can see you can actually smooth out the edges of the card very quickly, very easily and you've saved 
a piece. So that's the emery board. <clears throat> Still on the shaving side of things, this is a ped egg. It's a clean one, it's not used. Um, well, it is used, but it's used for my crafting. And what I do is I can take a piece of scrap piece of card, I'll just roll it up into a little ball, a little roll like that, and I can shred. Takes a while, I admit mean, it takes a while, but when you're done, you end up with some very, very fine shreds of card and you can do this with any color card so when you're using stampin up products and you want something to match it's a great option there's some there that i did with fresh fig and i ended up with this so this is the daisy flower i'm making into a gerbera for a project and in the very center of that flower hopefully you can see that there's some of that shavings that i have stuck down just with a little bit of glue Put the glue on and then drop the shavings on put quite a lot on and tap it down don't press too far um, otherwise the glue all comes right the way through and soaks right through but that is a nice little soft center and uh, rather than using a proprietary brand of flower center something like um, flower soft um, i've actually made it so that it coordinates with my flower and i'll show that flower on a product on a project later on I have makeup brushes, a variety of makeup brushes. These are great for when you have embossing and you need to remove some pieces of um, embossing powder. You can just use your brush to get that off. Obviously that's quite a wide brush that will only be useful for large areas, but you can use a much finer brush to get the embossing powder closer to the image that you stamped. I have a nail brush here. Nail brush I use for a number of different things. Sometimes when you're crafting and you cut something out with your big shot, you end up with little whiskery bits. And this particular die, um, the window die here, I have a have a problem with that. You can see there's a a whisker there that's come off. What I do is with my nail brush I can just while the die is still in the the card is still in the die I will just rub the brush over the die cut piece and you can see all those whiskery bits that would normally be stuck around the edges of the die all come off much makes a much cleaner image much easier than st sitting there trying to pick it off with your fingernails um, the other way that i use the die is if i had a very intricate die sometimes little tiny bits get stuck inside and you can just use the, this brush to brush inside and get those little bits off from the back of the die one final way that i use my nail brush is with my trimmer Inevitably, if you're using a trimmer that has a channel like the Stampin' Trimmer does, sometimes you get little bits of card and paper inside the, the channel. And this is what can sometimes cause problems when you're cutting. It can make the blade catch and it can um, result in the ragged edges that we saw on this piece of card. So all I do with my nail brush is just rub it along. And all the pieces come out and my trimmer is ready to use so i hope that's been helpful to you i hope it's given you some ideas of places that you can look for things to help you in your craft room and i look forward to seeing you again for another room raiders bye